Russ Merritt is executive director for Blue Ridge Literacy in Roanoke, which works to teach English to both native-born Americans and immigrants to this country. He's also the pastor for two churches. Born into a family of educators, Merritt was CEO for the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce at one time, also working as an officer for YMCA's in Franklin County and Roanoke before joining Blue Ridge Literacy in 2011. Russ Merritt, welcome to the interview. I'm glad to be here. Blue Ridge Literacy, how long have you guys been around? It's been a while. Literacy has been around, or this program has been around now for 29 years. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you know, I think when people think of te teaching English, basically, reading and writing, uh, Right, where the focus is on being able to read and write and converse, communicate in English. I think a lot of misconception a lot of people may have is that it's the majority of Spanish-speaking people learning English, but right. that's not really that's the case. Not, not the case at all. We do have a large number of Hispanic folk within the community who are uh, making a life for themselves here, but um, Pearl Fu will tell you that we've got over 100 nationalities that have now settled in the Roanoke area, and that's a lot of different languages and a lot of folks that are looking to learn English. Right, and, and how are a lot of these people coming to Blue Ridge Literacy? They, they, need come, help. They, they mostly come to us through word of mouth. They get referred to us on occasion through government agencies or through churches or uh, through friends, um, but uh, mostly they hear about us on the street and uh, come to us to learn English, come to us to prepare for citizenship, come to us to, uh, for help with employment, um, applications, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Because literacy, English literacy, I'd say, is really an economic development, economic yeah, very issue much for so. a lot of people. For both the community and an individual. Uh, the more prepared our workforce is, the better the uh, companies are going to be. And you've got to be able to communicate in the uh, lingo of the local community. And it got more connected to the community as well. Exactly. As, as, um, and I think you were just telling me you're now dealing with, you said, a, kind of a bumper crop, over 400 well, the, the most folks we have ever had in our program, 421 learners with us right now. Uh, we use the word learner rather than student because we want to make sure that folks don't see us academically. Right. We're much more a human service um, organization than we are an educational organization. Uh, coming from 44 different countries, uh, plus uh, the folks we have from here in our own country. And you, and you de strictly deal with adults, correct? Strictly deal with adults, right. Now, if these people have kids, the kids are more likely to know English because they're in school? Well, the school system does a great job of working in ES, what's now called ESOL, English for Speakers of Other Languages. The uh, school system does well with that, but uh, parents frequently get left behind. For one thing, kids learn quicker than, than we old folks do. Uh, but secondly, the school system is focused on those um, international students and uh, not as much available for adults, so that's where we come in. Do the kids help get the adults up to speed once they start le learning English? Well, there, there's um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of anecdotal evidence that the kids are very helpful as translators and as they begin to bring some of the, uh, what they have learned into the household, uh, parents have to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think Blue Ridge Literacy, really the origins of it were really for maybe more rural, poor Americans. Folks, who right, right folks who are American born native English speakers who, for a variety of reasons, school systems uh, oh, 40, 50 years ago did not have the kind of special education programs they do now. For reading and. Uh, they did not keep kids in school as well as they're doing today. And so there are a lot of folks who are my age and older um, who uh, struggled and dropped out of school. And so um, there was a literacy issue for those folks. Now school systems have. Um, improve their programming, and uh, much of what we do is focused on uh, immigrants. Mm -hmm. You've got a background as a pastor. I do. And also you work for YMCA's in the area, the development work. What attracted you to this, and I guess you come from a family of educators as well, but I do. what I attracted do. you to Blue Ridge Literacy, which is really education in a lot of ways? Right, Lit literacy is, um, I, I was at one time a volunteer for literacy. Uh, this was, um, I, I saw this as being one of the significant needs within the community. Obviously, people have to have food, and food banks are wonderful, and people have to have medical care, and people have to have shelter. Uh, but awfully close behind that is the ability to communicate in the language of the culture in which you're living. And being able to read and write and communicate in English is vital for economic development and for personal development. And I wanted to be part of uh, helping make the world a better place. And maybe if you can speak English and read it, you can get a better job and you don't have to use the food bank. Without question. Well, well, you can become more involved civically. Um, it's interesting that we now have a couple of elected officials who are uh, Sam Rasool and uh, Ray Ferris, who are children of immigrants recently. Um, how, how immigrants are going to really help make this e even stronger country, that was important to me as well.
Hmm. Blue Ridge Literacy, how are you funded? Uh, we're funded through some grants, but mostly through local support, through donations that are provided uh, by people who recognize the need for this service. Hmm. And you just had your popular Scrabble tournament and fundraiser. We did. We did. Had a Scrabble, record, Scrabble record went very, very well. Had a big crowd of folks at the Scrabble tournament. Do that every year in March. Hmm. And I know that you rely, Russ, quite a bit on volunteers. It's a very small paid staff. So all these teachers, these people, instructors that are working with these adults, most of these people are volunteers? Uh, almost everyone. We have a two and a half paid staff folk. Uh, so the other 150 folks who are teaching classes and working one on one as tutors. Uh, come to us because um, they have the same drive to to touch someone's life and make a real impact. Hmm. How how long would a would a, an adult typically be in one of your programs learning the language? Uh, a lot depends on where they come from. Uh, some countries, an example, Cuba has a, a good educational program which focuses a lot on English. So, folks from Cuba who come to us are going to be up to uh, um, high school graduate level within a year or two. Really? Somebody who comes from Haiti, on the other hand, um, just what across the water from Cuba, um, Haiti f um, does not have the same kind of educational programming and they might be with us five or six years. Hmm. Do you, um, uh, the, where people are coming from, your, your, your students or your uh, uh, is learners. This, learners. Is it sort of a barometer of what's going on in the world? I mean, do you see an to, influx from African degree, yes. countries when yep. there's strife in certain countries? We do. Many of the, the locally, the um, Commonwealth Catholic Charities and a few churches and other agencies do a wonderful job of resettling um, uh, the refugees who are coming to us from third world countries that are having significant problems. Uh, we get those folks after their immediate survival skills have been provided for this country. Um, and you can tell where there is a hotbed of activity. For instance, uh, in the last five years, we've gotten a lot of folks from Bhutan and Nepal because of the Chinese incursion there. We're getting more and more folks from um, Africa, from Burundi, um, where there's been a lot of um, internal ethnic cleansing, from the Congo, um, Central African Republic, and so forth, where there are crises. So, yeah, you can tell locally what's going on internationally. Mm. Students typically very motivated to learn the language? Yeah, very much so. Very, very much so. The folks who come to this country come here believing that this is going to be a whole new start for them. And they, they see America as um, a shining light. And uh, what maybe some of us have gotten cynical about, they still love. Mm. What are graduation ceremonies like? They, they must be kind of a poignant they are. Ceremony, they are. It, every year in, in early August we have our celebration and recognition um, annual programming and they all bring their, their food from their culture and their country. We have a big potluck event uh, and recognize uh, folks who've gotten new jobs or advanced in their jobs or become citizens. We've had 80 some citizens in the last 20 months who've come through our program. Just to wrap up, we've got less than a minute left, but it, as far as the arc of your career, is this sort of a capstone with what you're doing? Does this sort of fit with everything else you've done? It does. It does. I, um, I feel that there's, there's something special about making someone's life better through um, the opportunities that they, they have through literacy. Hmm. Sounds good. Russ Merritt from Blue Ridge Literacy. We'll have to leave it there. Russ, thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Our guests have been Roanoke County Supervisor Al Bedrosian and Blue Ridge Literacy Executive Director Russ Merritt. I'm Gene Morano. You can look for me in the Roanoke Star bi-weekly, play-by-play magazine, and in Valley Business Front. And listen for me on WFIR News Talk Radio. Until next time, take care.